Okay, I'm going to give you a tour around this BMW R100 Trad, T-R-A-D. And yes, I bet very few people have heard of that bike outside of Japan, but uh, that's the purpose of this video, to give a, a bit of a visual and an auditory description of this particular model. Uh, some people watching might have heard of the R100 so-called classic that made its way to the US around 91, 92. Apparently, according to folklore, around 180 of those bikes were made and shipped to the US, uh, basically black R100 naked bikes uh, with a range of serial numbers covering 180 units. But BMW don't really seem to have a record or at least a publicly available record for those bikes. But they definitely exist. I've seen, uh, I've spoken to people online and they definitely exist in the wild. So what's this bike got to do with those bikes? Well, this is a cousin. This is a bike made in 90, 91. So really a precursor to the US version. Uh, marked in Japan as an R100 Trad or R100 Traditional. You might recall that around that time or since about 84, 85, BMW were not manufacturing uh, a naked R100. Uh, so the story, which I will include a link below in more detail, the story was the Egyptian police, yeah, repeat, the Egyptian police ordered about 200 of these bikes in 89. That order got cancelled or deferred for whatever reason. So BNW were looking out for a new, uh, a new buy for those allocated bikes. Uh, and by the way, the Egyptian police ordered R80s, but with a 1,000cc engine. So when that order got cancelled, uh, I'm surmising that BNW Japan put the hand up and said, OK, we'll take those bikes. We have a market for them. So when I plug my chassis number into the BMW uh, parts catalogue, and I've also been in contact with BMW Group in Germany, what both those sources confirm is my chassis number, which is down there on the frame. That chassis number uh, returns a description of R100, sorry, R80 Special Edition for Japan with a 980cc engine. So again, Egyptian police cancelled their order, reworked for BNB Japan. Uh, I include more details in the link below, but basically the frames are either stamped R80CJ, classic for Japan, or R100, as mine is, classic for Japan. So what else can I tell you? This bike, I acquired it a couple of weeks ago. It's in very, very original condition, not perfect by any means, but pretty good. In fact, I'd say for a 30 year old bike, really outstanding original condition. Those front rotors are not the original rotor, so I'm gonna revert back next year to uh, the correct uh, R80 type slotted rotors. And those forks, I think also need, they are genuine, but need, need repainting or uh, reworking common chrome headlight between this bike and the R100 Classic. And don't confuse this bike or the R100 Classic for the US, don't confuse that with the R100R, the R100 Mystique, or the R100R Classic, which were all sold really around the world 93, 94, 95. Both this bike and the R100 Classic were, uh, were precursors to that bike. Okay, so oil cooler on the front, that's common between this and the US version. Uh, mine's been what I would call debadged, so, but I've seen them online with R100 on the, on the side uh, panels there. Uh, but apart from the seat, that seat is three centimeters lower on this bike, the Japanese market compared to the US market. But apart from that, I think it's pretty much identical to those 180 that went to the US. Uh, even that number's disputed, but let's call it 180. So we had 200 of these that went to Japan. I know that because it's been confirmed by two dealers in Japan, and 
I've plugged in about 20 serial numbers from those bikes into the, the parts catalog and they all come back as special authorities. Egypt, the original orderer, but they all got redirected to Japan. They all have the 980cc engine, although they're based off the R80. All of those 200 Japanese bikes and the 180 went to the US. We've all got that 980cc engine. Uh, so what I was going to show you, very, very clean inside the tank. I'll see if I can flip the, uh, the seat up here, which is very... Okay, so here we have the seat flipped up, and I think it's always a good uh, indicator of the uh, how genuine a bike is by looking underneath the seat. It's where people don't normally clean. Colour code. Uh, all that looks very genuine, very clean. There's a, a toolbox in the back, back compartments. No room under the seat because of that uh, extended, or the, that lowered section because of the lower seat. Otherwise, yeah, it's, uh, I guess it is what it is. It's the uh, the mono, which is my favorite, the uh, the power lever. Whilst I think that has some advantages uh, in certain situations, potentially over complex for uh, your average road user. Uh, I know it's supposed to address some in inherent shaft drive challenges, but I, I like it the way it is. So, Monoshock, uh, genuine, I believe, genuine 67,000 kilometers. So yeah, there you go. Check out the link below for uh, more details. So just thought I'd do a cold start of the bike, just to let you hear it, absolutely super cold a little bit of choke I think just a little bit Choke. Just need a tiny bit of choke. That's the most beautiful bike sound in the world, in my opinion. <laughs> 